What's up, folks? Welcome to the bonus episode this week. I've put this bonus episode out for free, okay? No, no, this is not behind the paywall. You can only get this one on YouTube and the Patreon. Uh, so thank you so much if you've found this episode. You are listening to uh, an awesome kind of impromptu episode that happened over the last couple days here with Max Davies from Kitchen Dwellers. And man, like... I, Already super excited to talk to anyone from the Kitchen Dwellers. Those guys are doing very cool things within that jam grass sort of world. And we talk about that on this episode. It's um, it's it's cool bluegrass education. It's cowboy music education. It's their music. It's also these amazing influences and teases that kind of go through all of everything they do. If you haven't listened to the Kitchen Dwellers or if you're not familiar Get yourself familiar because they're on tour right now. They just announced a tour last week. Check that out on their Instagram. Um, but Max is awesome. Max is from uh, Crystal Lake, Illinois. He's from like right around the corner from where I was born. Uh, and so just another Midwest Chicago guy talking about Chicago guy stuff. Can't, can't get better than that, man. Um, and was super happy to talk with him. We talked for a while before this episode. We ended up chatting for like another half hour, 45 minutes afterwards, because Max is just the man. He's super cool. Um, for those of you who are listening on the Patreon, this is welcome to the Patreon. This is a, a free episode that I've, I've thrown up on here. I want you guys to enjoy that. There's also some, some new things going on on the Patreon. We've got a chat now, okay? You can join at the chat tier. Join our best show ever community chat. That's where you can go to talk about the episodes. That's where you can go to talk a little shit about me, maybe. Um, you could even go there and find friends. Uh, if you're going to a show and you're looking for a group, just throw it in the chat. See if anyone's going. Meet up with some best show ever heads and go have yourself the best show ever, uh, wherever that may be. Um, go ahead and join for that. Uh, we would love to have you. Um, also, I only put this out on Patreon and then also the YouTube channel. So if you're on YouTube right now for the first time watching Best Show Ever, thank you so much. Um, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, that it really helps out with the algorithm of it all. I got to be honest. It really helps get these episodes out to more people, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, but that's enough intro out of me. Let's enjoy this conversation that I had with Max Davies. But first, here's a little bit of music from uh, Cal Kehoe. This is some unreleased Cal Kehoe cheese. Um, and this, uh, this is one of our guests this week, by the way, Cal Kehoe. Uh, so check out this song down uh, and enjoy this conversation I had with Max Davies. the bears are going to play their games um moving forward how how's things been man how you been doing doing well doing well i'm at home right now in in bozeman montana and we just got off the road a few days ago so we're we're hanging out here for a few days and we're we're heading to alaska on wednesday so that's in like two days so joe joe our bass player is from up there and we get to go kind of play some of some of his favorite favorite spots up up in alaska so things are going well it's a cool thing that the the jam scene and the jam grass scene or you know bands within that kind of bubble are touring alaska you know like disco biscuits are doing their thing up in alaska like that's a stop now that's sick <laughs> yeah yeah we we just when we were all texting about that that we saw that the disco biscuits were heading up there which is awesome like you know some of our friends have always gone up and done little runs up in Alaska. Um, but it seems like, yeah, it's just all bands are kind of, and you've seen it with like bands that started going to Iceland and, and kind of branching out. It's like, well, yeah, why not, why not make Alaska a stop? And, and yeah, they have, you know, they, there's like the state fair, there's salmon fest, there's club shows. Like you can kind of like, we're, we're going up there and we're playing a, a variety of kind of like venues. Does that, um, I mean, it's a tour. Of course, it's a tour, but does that like a special kind of different stop like that kind of end up being a little bit more of like a like are you guys gonna be doing some Alaska stuff? Like, is it gonna oh, end up being sort of a vacation? Yeah, for sure. We have a handful. We have like four days off in between. So the way that it works out is we're gonna be in Southeast Alaska, Juneau, like because 
And when you're up in Alaska, it's, you're either getting to places by plane or by boat. Like there's really, you're not driving. Like you have to fly or take a boat to get there. So the first five days will be in Southeast Alaska. And then we're going to go, Ooh, hi kitty. Uh, and then we're going to go up to Anchorage. So we'll, we'll fly up there. And so we have like four days off in between. Um, I'm actually, I, unfortunately this trip, I have to come back here for like a day, but, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's going to go fishing, uh, you're kayaking into glaciers. Like you can do like on our few days off, people are going to go adventure there. Everyone's probably going to go fishing. Um, cause it's Man. incredible. Up there. Yeah. And when you put it like that, it's like, I mean, I'm sure to, to people who have never been up to Alaska or whatever, they're like, man, wouldn't you rather go tour San Diego or L.A. or some shit? But when you put it like that, it's like, fuck L.A. Oh, I'd, rather, I'd much rather go to Alaska. Yeah, we're going to, for the one show in Haines, <laughs> we're taking the ferry from Juneau to Haines. And it's going to be just like the most beautiful place, you know, you've ever seen. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we went there a few years ago and, and we went fishing because Joe, our bass player, grew up up there and um yeah and we went fishing and and i mean it was incredible we, we were catching halibut salmon like it was just insane yeah. yeah i mean i know that of the the dudes from dogs in the pile love to go to montana for the same reason i remember being like you guys are going to montana and they're like we fucking love montana dude yeah. like you know because they get to fish and they get to do what they like to do on top of playing some cool shows and then i'm sure that that sets up for um great shows for you guys i'm sure you puts you in a cool place yeah as a group. yeah Definitely. You feel a little bit more just like relaxed. And I mean, not that you're not always stoked to be playing, but you're just like, wow, I can't believe I'm here right now. And I get to perform. Yeah. A little bit of work life balance, even for, you know, even for you guys. Yeah. You know, you got to figure it out somehow. <laughs> That's right, man. Well, I'm, I'm stoked that you wanted to, to chat and I'm stoked that we were getting some time to, to chat. I'm, uh, you know, I don't know when I'm seeing the Kitchen Dwellers next. It's, I'm, I'm not going to be up in Alaska, but I, I cannot wait to see you guys next. Oh, yeah. um, and I could chat about your guys' tour all day long, but th that's just not what the podcast is about. The podcast is about shows you've seen. So um, with that, we'll, we'll kind of get into your, your best shows. I mean, do you, what, what's the first concert you ever saw in your life? Well, the, so uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Mr. Blotto, but um, there yeah, and dude. so that wow, like, that I am so glad you're bringing up Mr. Blotto, my <laughs> Illinois guy. Fuck yeah, <laughs> uh, that so we some like our our really good family friend was related to one of them. So I'm like super young. Um, we went to the bar where they were playing, and I mean, I was in I was young, I was in grade school. Um, so I think that technically was kind of like the first show I ever saw um and it was just Man. so so cool but then I always say that like I mean the first the first legitimate show that I ever saw like got a ticket to my parents took me um was like the opposite end of the spectrum we went and saw Paul McCartney at the United Center right. and that was like <laughs> the two so, ends yeah. of the live music spectrum is the like the dead bar band that just fucking rips and is still going right now and then literally paul mccartney yeah who's also still ripping right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> the like the, the legend himself so uh yeah, yeah i mean those are those are basically my first shows yeah in uh, incredible i mean uh, paul mccartney has come up on uh, almost every episode of this season and almost every episode of the show Whoa. i mean it's, it's so hard to think about your best shows ever and if you've seen paul mccartney like he is just simply in there like even if you had like a terrible night and sat next to the worst people ever and you know or what it's paul mccartney yeah. like you're you're seeing one of the greatest musicians if not you know the most iconic musician of all time um but i gotta talk about mr blotto with you just for a little bit Let's because I, believe it or not le less people have brought up mr blotto than <laughs> no way <laughs> paul McCartney. i can't believe it either um man like my like my brothers would skip comedy shows of mine in chicago because they didn't want to miss blotto at the, no way at the, yeah <laughs> i mean and if you've been to chicago to see the grateful dead you've seen them playing outside wrigley field um it is really like a suburban chicago thing to do especially if you're like a grateful dead music lover or and were you a, a deadhead as a kid or family deadheads or um family not so much i kind of my but very very into music i grew up 
in a very like music loving household, I kind of got um, steered towards the dead, like my freshman year of high school. Um, and obviously it's like just a, it's like the biggest book that you can just dive into. So I just like, you know, you keep going down that road and it's, it's like never ending. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean that as I was getting into that, it was, it was like, okay, I definitely, I remember Mr. Blotto, that whole world. Um, and even with, there's like weird things growing up that kind of like in the fish world that just like kept showing up in my life. And then before I even like dove in there. Um, but yeah, as far as, as the dead goes, it's like, they're, they are just, they're stable in that world. And I mean, we would, we'd even go play. I remember this wasn't even that long ago. We, we played some festival, I think it was shoe fest in Illinois and Blada was there. And I was like, Hey guys, nice to meet you. Like I saw you 20 years ago or something. <laughs> And so. yeah, I mean, there's there's great examples of of uh, bands like that all over the country. Like I was just staying in San Diego and Electric Waste Band is, uh, you know, they're they're Grateful Dead cover band there that I don't even want to call them. That. I mean, they've been they, they do Mondays every single Monday for since 1992, which is when I was born. I mean, that's uh, that's a dedicated band. And Blotto is uh, very similar on the East Coast. They've got a ton of different bands like that. But yeah, they're they become a part of uh who you are especially if you grow up around them you know it is kind of like seeing you know like a famous band i'm sure down the road when you meet them you're like oh shit there's mr blotto in, in the same way that you would you know yeah. recognize like weezer or something like that you know <laughs> exactly exactly yeah 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 man. um well i mean that's very very cool for you to have brought them up do you have a uh, um <laughs> Not every show is awesome. Not every show is Paul McCartney. Um, do you have a worst concert memory that you can harken back to? Like a wor like a yeah, it, uh, have, it doesn't have to be the band's fault. Could have been your fault. Could have yeah. done something. You know. Um, I mean, well, so another there's just there's a lot of obviously going to be my coming up in music, going to shows. Time was all in Chicago. Um, and the biggest, the big thing growing up in high school was, you know, going to uh, New Year's at the Aragon for Umphreys. Yeah. And so it was like, yeah, yeah, my sophomore year, we, we went to the Aragon. It was my, like my best, you know, my musical buddy who we would, we basically cut our teeth jamming every night in his basement. Um, and we were like, let's go to let's go to the Aragon for New Year's. Uh, I think Keller, Keller was opening. Um, and we, you know, we're, we're like sophomores in high school. We like, we get our way to the front during Keller. It's like, a mil I mean, it's the Aragon. It's a million degrees in there. Good. We're like fifth row and, you know, I'm, I can't be drinking or anything, but like my buddy has us chill him and we're just like, we're like, sweet <laughs> Keller, let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, then, dude. so, so we're like, you know, we're like way up front. And then all of a sudden I just got like very lightheaded. Everything's fucking closing in. Um, and then I just completely, I turned to my buddy. And I'm like, I can't see um right now and he's like all right let's get you out of here and so we we just like we left left to the to the wing and passed out um and uh yeah they everybody was like is that guy gonna die what drugs is he on i was like oh like it's fine i just totally passed out um yeah yeah there are probably there are some other stories that probably don't need to be uh repeated <laughs> but that is a good that's a good uh <laughs> early, early young days i was like 15 not not the greatest experience dude i have done the same at shows uh, uh, under the same circumstances like you know uh in milwaukee like I've, I've done the aragon ballroom many a time and the milwaukee version of it that i saw a lot of shows at uh was the eagles ballroom at the rave um mm -hmm. and similar thing man like it, cool old venue like kind of a classic rock venue you know it's been around since mm -hmm. the 70s or whatever but it just gets hot in there and you know i was going to shows as a teenager too not doing anything other than hitting a chill I'm like exactly what you're talking about and you just i don't know i get claustrophobic at shows and i've passed out before and same thing like you know what kind of drugs is he on he's like he's just kind of tall and has 
poor blood pressure. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't drink enough water. <laughs> he didn't drink enough water, and everyone was too close to him, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, it's there, just. Yeah. There was another time where after, uh, it was after Dick's one year, and we were in college, and we were all driving. Uh, we ended up driving down the wrong this is after the show. We we drove. We were driving down the wrong side of the highway with the headlights off, and by the time everyone in the car realized that, it was everyone was screaming. Uh, so yeah, that that's I mean, like kind of the other end of the spectrum. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean it's like I said. Sometimes when we talk about the worst show ever, people are like, "Oh, you know, there's never been an artist that's really blown it on stage for me." Or there's I've never really seen a bad show. I'm like, "Yeah, but you've you yourself maybe have you, done a bad show. You, <laughs> yeah, you blew it. <laughs> you've blown it before. I I know that's true." um yeah man sometimes you just get a little lightheaded it's important to go off to the side and like you said uh pass out um uh, but with that <laughs> with that uh we can move on to your i mean it's very very hard to pick a best show ever this is honestly a very dumb idea for a show um i love it <laughs> I think it's but great. You, you gotta have at least a couple if if uh, you know shows that you'd be remiss not to bring up on this some honorable mentions do, do you have some some honorable mention shows of like Close to the best show ever, but not quite. Close to the best show ever, but not quite. Interesting question. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there are, I, we see so many shows, so it's kind of, it, honorable mentions is a good one, but, uh, you know, I, that's a hard one. Cause I mean, I, I've, I've always had a best show that I said was the best show, but like, I mean, how uh, every every fish show I've ever seen, every cheese show I've ever seen. Um, yeah. I guess what one honorable mention, cool one that I saw was um, was in Wisconsin. Uh, it was a co it was a co headline bill with Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys and Jeff Beck. Oh, wow! <clears throat> so I it was mean... like a really it was a really weird pairing. It was kind of because like sure they're they were both older, but like not really similar style never music. in the same pool no like one one guy was in the beach boys and then the other guy was like the greatest guitar player virtuoso like you know no other musician like him so it was just a really weird pairing but we were like all right we got to go see that and it was it was awesome it was like it, way different ends of the spectrum and then they all came out at the end and they played together and it was like i don't know when you're going to see brian wilson and jeff beck perform like together or even like i'm so glad that i saw jeff beck play um yeah because yeah like he, he's a guy who i wish you know if, if i hadn't seen him i would have been so bummed had i not been able to see him perform yeah and that's too i mean you know jeff beck is going to bring out the um the guitar heads you know he is the guitarist's guitarist like he mm. is um, even the way that the greatest guitarists ever or, you know, touring musicians talk about Jeff Beck is like how uh, fans would. And so, you know, that's the kind of crowd he's going to bring out. And that's not necessarily like those guys, the guys that are like guitar <laughs> heads and have a bunch of Fender gear and love all their... You know, they're not listening to the Beach Boys, and they kind of make a point not to listen to the Beach Boys. No. Uh, and same same thing with the Beach Boys crowd. I'm sure they're not like really looking for screaming guitar solos uh, or bluesy bend notes. They want harmonies and they want the classics and some of the best these. songs ever written. You know, like truly some of the best songs ever written. Very cool to have that that crowd. I mean, that that's some of the my, my favorite crowds I've been in. Is like you're at a festival and uh, you know, you're seeing a band that you really like and you can look around and be like, the people here are not here to see this band, but they're mm -hmm. loving it. Um, had to have had that feel. And yeah, dude, I mean, <laughs> if you are a guitarist, it, it almost feels like uh, necessary homework to have seen Jeff Beck live. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. And, and Brian Wilson's talking about a T-bird and Jeff Beck wants to drive a hot rod right through your living room. Like, yeah, yeah. Dude. Yes, dude. I mean, man, man, what a bill. Uh, yeah. And like you said, like every it's so hard for me to put like a fish show above another fish show, above another fish show, above another cheese show, above, an, you know, like they're all you know. fun and they're all great. Right. And I'm just excited for the next one. If I if I see of any of those guys. Um, 
and it's very like it, it it feels a little uh unfair to pull one out and be like this is the best you know mm-hmm. fish over <laughs> but do but do you but do you have a best show you ever saw in your life the well and i don't know if it was like circumstantial or what but because i was um at least growing up just like everyone when they you know when they get into something they kind of go deep and get obsessed i was very obsessed with pink floyd and uh saw david gilmore in 2006 at the rosemont theater and it's like it's a small you know it's pretty small theater i don't know what the capacity is there but you know it's not like he was playing at like the you know all state or someplace bigger but it was pretty small and it was I mean, it it was like, it was insane. I was literally, I mean, it was a seated show, but I was, I was like, my back was pressed against the back of the seat. Like I was clenching the the armrest the whole entire time. Like it just, you know, for, he played a bunch, he played echoes, he played all the good stuff. And um, that I think just, and this is all just my memory, you know, like my memory tells me that that's the greatest show I ever saw. Like, have I seen other ones that maybe at the time blew me away more? I don't know, but, but that one meant so much and, and it blew me away. Like the sound in there was insane. And I was at the, I was at that perfect age of like 16 or 17. Um, So yeah, I, that, that was always kind of, I would consider that to be like the best show I ever saw. Yeah. And again, like Pink Floyd presentations of both kinds, David Gilmore and Roger Waters have been brought up <clears> on this show many times for fucking very good reason. I mean, you know, it yeah. you walk away from those shows, you know, hearing obviously the Pink Floyd songbook is uh, very, very important music to people who mm-hmm. enjoy music, period. Yeah. You know, like um, but both of those different presentations of that music is yeah, like uh, incredibly moving to see whether you're seeing the Roger Waters full production, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's pigs flying through and there's a laser, you know, the laser show and he's building the wall or you're seeing David Gilmour with, you know, some of the most iconic. I mean, like the when you hear David Gilmour play the guitar, you you could hear for four seconds and be like, that's David Gilmour, you know, and there's only a few guys that are really like that. And so that is equally moving and equal equally will blow you away. Um, and to see either one of those guys on tour ever, uh, again, immediately kind of has to leap itself into like one of the best shows you ever saw. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, do, do anything you can to go, to go see that. Cause yeah, yeah. He had, you know, Rick, Rick Wright was playing with him. He had all, all the backup, you know, side guys were the guys that have been, that were even like on some of the records and had been with them forever. So it was like, you know, th- the band was no slouch. Oh yeah, I mean, can you uh, any musician to have get to get the call? Hey, would you like to play <laughs> some Pink Floyd music on tour? You're gonna get the best musicians ever, and they do. Uh, both of them do a really good job of either pulling in guys like Snowy White or you know, uh, you know, players who have been with them through these through their albums and through these tours, or mm-hmm. like you know, David Gilmore is about to go on tour here in the fall, and apparently he's got a whole crop of new musicians yeah. who kind of want to jam a little bit and. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and and cool. uh, uh, Pops is a big David Gilmore guy. We nice. and you know, as far as politics go in our house, we're a Gilmore house, and uh, <laughs> and he everyone can agree on that. <laughs> and he, yeah, and he is uh, you know, the last time we saw him, you know, was like the last time we're ever going to see him, and there was tears, and there's all this stuff because, yeah, I mean, were, were your were your folks Pink Floyd people or? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I remember, I mean, I remember the first time I ever heard Shiny Crazy Diamond in riding in my dad's car. I was in, you know, I was again, I was in like grade school and I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like guys in lab coats at like, I mean, it, it sounded like mad scientists and we were, and I was just like, this is, this is music. Like, what the hell? This is insane. So yeah, yeah. I definitely grew up uh, with with a lot a lot of that going on in the house. Same, my folks were not deadheads. Um, like you mentioned before, they were fucking Pink Floyd and Rush people, you know, which I think was uh, true of a lot of people from the Chicago land area. We had a lot of yeah, that type exactly, of guy. <laughs> exactly. Pink Floyd, Rush, the Beatles. Uh, yep. it's just it's kind of just the way you you're raised in the Midwest for sure. 
yeah i think that there was like some sort of like an identity thing with the grateful dead but for some reason there wasn't with pink floyd you know it's like i'm not a freaking deadhead all right guys and then it's like but mm. yeah you are like smoking joints at fucking animals tour back then though so like it's <laughs> the same yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> You're not better than anybody yeah yeah that midwest oh, sensibility mm, um that. yeah i it, it, that music is so important i mean like do you guys uh, that specifically pink floyd music is so important i mean um do you do you feel like you've you guys like try to work in like maybe not covers i don't think i've ever seen too many covers of pink floyd stuff out of kitchen dwellers but like teasing or phrasing or any of that kind of stuff you feel like comes through in the way that you play oh for sure yeah um we we so we a number of years ago we we've done this thing called uh reheated and it's basically we just kind of made it made a play on it with like the kitchen dwellers name and then we were like oh it'd be fun to do some some covers like in our own way and we called it reheated um and we've only done we've done two of them one of them we did by the band and then the other one we actually did pink floyd and so we did yeah three we did three tracks um we did welcome to the machine pigs and hey you um and we like we kind of recorded some of it during covid like lot in a live setting so it like doing that was so fun learning it and then like it's definitely seeped into the sound for sure like we um we we try to incorporate a lot of just like the the soundscape uh kind of jam because they when they were in their you know early days they definitely would would jam and they would just kind of do like soundscape improv and so we uh, we've definitely taken as much as we can from their book in that in that regard for sure yeah i mean saucer full of secrets and some of those early albums yeah that you just are sitting in a lot of different soundscape type jams and so um and just like confident you know it's not noodling it is it's super confident soundscape stuff and so mm -hmm. yeah I, and if you're a fan of that stuff and you're sitting around with your your incredible musician friends and your band, I mean, that's got to be so much fun to be like, fuck, we're ripping <laughs> Welcome to the Machine right now. <laughs> this is so Yeah, sick. I'm just, I'm just going to turn this dial way up and it's going to make a bunch <laughs> of crazy noises. And that's really all <laughs> we're trying to do here. This is just for fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it comes through. I mean, like it you can you can tell when a band is having fun making something and like, you know, when covers are fun covers are fucking they fun are. yeah and we try to you know we try to make them our own way it's like also because we have a super gnarly banjo that <laughs> when if we're if we're gonna play a pink floyd song that is going to shine through in a completely different way so yeah. uh yeah it's like and 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 we do a whole one thing that we try to do is we change up covers a ton like we do stuff all over the board we do like metal we do punk we do super 90s country so it's like we it's kind of fun just to be like oh like let's try this uh let's see how this sounds within just the four of us on acoustic instruments yeah torn talked a little bit about that on his episode too about how of course it is fun to you know bust out some cowboy music that you know people don't really know too much of or it's mm -hmm. it's really fun to um you know kind of do that like blues thing you know where you kind of teach the audience a little bit about bluegrass mm. music or cowboy music or or anything like that he's like but if i can fucking work a no effects keys into something or you know like that's fun for me and yeah. especially the, the couple people who hear it and love it you know blending mm -hmm. that is like that's what makes it us you know that's what makes it who we are yeah yeah and like i don't i mean i don't know about you but growing up i country was the furthest thing from my listening and like radar like these guys the guys in the band they know they know so many of these country songs and i'm just like it's it's been educational for me because i was like i just straight up didn't listen to country don't know any country um so it's been kind of eye-opening there <laughs> dude I, I, like i told you before we moved up to wisconsin when i was 10 and I, you know all of a sudden we're in countryville like everybody loved everybody in wisconsin's going to country thunder country and, thunder exactly yeah man and like listening to a ton of country music i have gone to some country shows and gave it a fair shake okay and in that in that time in my life when i was in high school 
you know, even the the whoever the cutest girl was I had a crush on still could not get me into Jason Aldean. There's just no fucking way. And I didn't listen to country music. And now it feels like there's all this different country music that's making its way back into my life through, you know, Billy Strings or Sam Grisman Project, or you guys or, you know, uh, <laughs> and I'm so ignorant to it so unbelievably ignorant to it like if they start playing the who i'll be you know <laughs> i know dude <laughs> i'll get it i'll totally get it but you know yep yep uh yeah kind of funny and it's funny to just like getting exposed to it so much later you're you i mean i don't since i wasn't involved in it like throughout the timeline of it it's like oh, okay like in the 90s there this was kind of like at least popular country early 2000s it was this and then now i yeah i mean and you can kind of see that with how popular it is right now it's like well yeah like great great music country music is getting made um sturgill and tyler children's like they those are even and this is kind of the thing is that and i think this is like representative of growing up not knowing it when when those guys first like when when our band first heard those guys they loved them they were like they were like, have you heard this guy, Sturgill Simpson? And I was like, no. And they were like, he's fucking amazing. Like, let's, so we would just like listen to him in the van. And I'd be like, I don't, I don't know if I totally get it. And then like right. now a few years later, I'm like, oh, holy shit. Yeah, dude, he's fucking amazing. Like I love Sturgill. I love Tyler. But like upon first listen, since it just wasn't really like my, I don't know. I wasn't in the thing that I always grew up with, even, um, more traditional country from you know like back in the day i mean i knew like willie and and a little bit of Waylon, but like not really Johnny ash like yeah. the very the top yeah, of I was, the, exactly you know and when i first heard them i was like okay cool like i i mean you know it's, I, this isn't like blowing my socks off but like but now i i love it and it's i just i'm like holy shit like okay this is awesome yeah and i'm sure that if there was a blues guitar you know uh sturgill out there like we, you know in chicago you just grow up around a lot of blues music there's mm -hmm. so much good local blues music and then obviously we've got the huge murals to bb king and buddy we have buddy guys in the city like you can go see fucking buddy guys <laughs> you know like we have a lot of that uh guitar appreciation from that perspective you know the the early blues guys that morph into the rock and roll guys um that make that type of music and that's that's at least true for me and i've got an ear closer to that so if there was like some kid playing blues guitar you know that was really sick and i i would be like wow attuned to this and maybe those guys in the band would be like that's awesome i i don't yeah quite that, you know? we i think we've even we've even talked about that like uh like i think swain has even been like he's like yeah man he's like i just he's like i don't really the blues does nothing for me and i'm like oh like i that's kind of what i grew up with i mean we used to in high school yeah. we would go we would play the bar in woodstock called liquid blues um and i'd like go there on a wednesday and i would see my english teacher and we'd play for <laughs> we'd play like the open mic and it was it was just all it was all blues i mean that's you know blues funk rock yeah, little white kids in Crystal Lake doing Thrill is Gone. Exactly. Th <laughs> Thrill is Gone, uh, Stor Stormy Monday, like, yeah. you know, uh, sprinkling a little bit of Funky Bitch. Um, that was right. That, that was life. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think the closest to country music that, like, my dad, you know, and if he was on this podcast right now, he'd be like, I love Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson. What are you talking about? Like, he's like, you know, whatever. But I think... The closest we really did listening to country music was like uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, who was a fucking blues guitarist, you know, and so yes. and blew my mind as a kid, like was blew my mind. Ray Vaughan. Yeah. 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 Same. I mean, watching the DVDs and, mm -hmm. you know, all the, all that stuff that that music is a, a huge part of our road trips and all of that. But um, yeah. Country music is super important. We are too ignorant motherfuckers. At least I am. Uh, I'm not going to. Yeah, that. no, no. I mean, that's what happens when you grow up in a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing our best, man. Know, the fact like, we heard any music at all. I, I'm like, I live near the country. I don't know why I didn't listen to it. Didn't listen to it. Liked punk stuff. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, man, man, that's yeah, that's so funny. And I, I've never really thought of it in that way. But that is 
It's so true of us Chicago boys. Are you going back home anytime soon? Are you going back to the Chicago area? Uh, we're trying to go this this fall because, um, yeah, my parents are actually like in the process of selling their house. So I'd like to get back mm -hmm. one one more time, um, you know, before that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we, we try to get back for the holidays a little bit more nowadays. Um, but as far as like shows go, um, I mean, our fall tour, which we're announcing this week, we're not hitting Chicago proper, but like, you know, we're going to be in Appleton, um, uh, yeah. yeah, Kalamazoo. So, um, yeah, we won't hit Chicago like directly, but, um, you know, it's always good to go through there, hit Portillo's. Exactly, dude. I was just going to say, where's your beef spot? So I, of course, and you know, it, this is the time to go like. This is the time oh, to be in Chicago and Wisconsin is right now, you know? Yeah. His Summerfest. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, what, what, one of the, so one of the greatest shows I ever saw was at Summerfest. I mean, we, I saw the first show at Summerfest was, we saw all the side stuff. We saw Humphreys, saw all, all the side stuff, but the first show uh, was Pearl Jam opening for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, at what, what's, I can't remember the big, like the big amphitheater at Summerfest. Oh, the Marcus Amphitheater? The that Marcus is no longer there. Oh, I think what? it's something else now. Yeah, okay. they took the whole thing down. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, saw Pearl Jam open for Tom Petty, and that was that was one of the most epic shows ever. Um, yeah. And then saw um, the other show was, it was Keller, and then Bob Weir and Rat Dog, and then Cheese. And that was that was one of the best cheese shows I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, you know, hit, hitting Summerfest, hitting all the stuff. Um, I never did go to Lollapalooza. I saw a late night Lollapalooza called Bustle in Your Hedgerow. And that was Bayless, um, somebody cool. from Ween. And it was like half of Umphreys, half of Ween or something. And, uh, oh, and I think Marco Benevento. And it was all, wow. it was, it was all just, <laughs> it was all Beatles and Zeppelin and it was like a Lollapalooza after show at the Abbey. And it was just, it was so cool. Yeah. You know, like this is the best thing that's happened all day. And Lollapalooza happened today. <laughs> you know, yeah. the after shows are so much fun. And I, I, you know, I did more of those than I did Lollapalooza because I would just get, you know, not get a wristband because it was too mm -hmm. much or something. And then be like, well, you know, that all the people I want to see are either playing here, here, or here, you know, go to the mm -hmm. Metro tonight and see something or. Yep. Yep. Still never been to the Metro, but, um, but yeah, it's like in, you, you want to go now or in the fall, yeah. catch a Cubs game, go in the winters. And then get yeah. the hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, we both it's, did. It's gray. It's really gray, but, but I, I love it. You know, that's where I grew up and, and I, I think our, I think Crystal Lake's slogan is like a great place to be. And yeah, that I makes a that. lot of sense. <laughs> I cannot wait to uh, get off the plane, take an Uber uh, to my parents' house and just uh, talk with the guy the whole fucking way, you know? <laughs> they're going to be like, hey, are you coming in? Oh, coming in from San Francisco. Oh, gosh. Is that nice there or what's going on there? How was the flight long, huh? <laughs> oh, wow. Can I ask you how much that costs? Wow. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> geez. <laughs> my conversation with max awesome times awesome guy I always appreciate a chance to talk about pink floyd on this podcast you know we cover fish and we cover the dead but pink floyd's pretty important too man um and just talking about rock and roll dude max finds himself in sort of a bluegrass jam grass outfit these days but he's a rock and roll guy he's a good old chicago blues boy just like we like it um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, free episode on the Patreon and also exclusive episode to the YouTube. Um, if you want to leave uh, a, a little comment on here, that really helps. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube, please, by all means, we really appreciate it. If, if you'd like to join as a paid member to the Patreon, uh, you'll get access to episodes a, a, a day before anybody else. You'll get access to bonus episodes like this one that I usually throw behind the paywall. And you'll have access to the, if you'd like, you'd have access to the best show ever chat. And that gets you uh, 
just talking with all the other best show ever heads, just talking some shit about me, you know, freaking uh, meeting up with buddies at shows uh, and talking about how sick Max is. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, have a great show. <laughs>